Hello and welcome, I'm Kia Scrivener, and today it is snowing beautifully, wonderfully. Welcome to Canada. And uh, the light might be weird because of that, because I'm watching it flicker back and forth, but it's so pretty, but also I don't want to go with that. Today, I am really, really happy. I'm going to do a book update because I have so many thoughts about the books that I've been reading. I haven't had any duds, and I've had a few favorites already, and I am so psyched. So I have had like a few things. We're gonna have some, we're gonna have a little bit of Snapple and Pop today because of the fact that we have a beautiful thing. So I don't know what day this is going to go up because it is being filmed on a Sunday afternoon, but I have a video that I already have scheduled for tomorrow. It is going to be a little bit of a heavier one. It is about suicide and my own attempt and how kind of how we view suicide and stuff like that. It It's important for me to acknowledge it every year and I don't know, not that it holds me back and that's kind of what it's talking about, but it's about talking about the way that we frame suicide, especially in fiction, looking at Sylvia Platt and some of the other people who committed suicide, and how we look at their lives through the lens of death and how I would rather it be through the lens of life. We can filter every part of someone's life through one choice they made or we can make it through all the choices they made to live. So this is going to go up on the anniversary of six years after I tried to take my own life and I've seen a lot of health, I've seen a lot of joy, I've seen a lot of things that I am so glad that I'm around to celebrate and I think that for a time when you're in those seasons of depression, it can feel like it's never going to end. And I don't think that that's the truth. And I think that we need to fight against that lie that it's only a circle you'll never get out of. So that's my video that is going to go out tomorrow. So this is probably going to be more midweek, <laughs> even though I'm filming it in a weird order. So yeah, I want to talk about some comics, some poetry, and then I'll talk about a little bit for my plans for the reading week and all these things. I want to be better at like doing these updates because I often get really psyched about books, but I'm like, it's not a Friday. I can't do Friday reads, but who cares? We're just going to do random updates at random times. So first of all, I have read a lot of poetry this month. I have finished my book completely. <laughs> We're going to have some praise things there because this is a book that I finished like a year and a half ago and I have just been sitting on it and editing and mulling it over and I want to actually submit it. So I have finished it and I have put it in a PDF so that I can't edit it anymore and I'm going through the querying process and it is a lot. I'm trying to find like comps and stuff so I'm going back to some of like, like my foundational poets that I really really love and being like am I more their style? Am I more this style? How do I like market to an agent and stuff? So I'm really really nervous. So for that week when I was just like reading comps I had started with The Princess Saves Herself in this one because Amanda Lovelace was one of the first poets after Ruby Carr that I read and I found that I really liked her work. I found that it's not really where I am anymore. I think that it, it allowed me to have the vulnerability to open and stuff like that but her poems to me more universal and like kind of like manifesto as in like this is what we're doing encouragement and I think I tend to gear toward the like highly personal and hopefully universal thing by talking about really intricate and intimate moments hopefully you can connect in another way that might not look exactly like my situation but it's also intimate and I also tend to tell other people's stories as well and some of my poems are longer some of my poems are you know different ways so it doesn't quite look like Amanda Lovelace and I don't think I can quite use her as a comp but I do really appreciate the ways that she talks about like holding both the fact that her mother abused her and her grief over her mother dying and how there can be really complicated relationships there. I really think that that's something that I really learned from her poetry and I really liked. The next poetry collection that I read was Dearly by Margaret Atwood. I really want to compare myself to Margaret Atwood which first of all seems incredibly cocky and most people also don't see her as a poet so it doesn't work very well but I really love the fact that she takes you in a moment and she paints that picture. Invisible Man is one of the things that I really really love that poem. I think it was really foundational to the way that I grow and when I read this collection back in 2020, I just kind of paused and I wrote poems and I thought about poems and then I like wrote a poem, not about her experience, but like, how do I take this style or how do I capture a moment like her? And I think I took a lot of inspiration from this collection and it was really lovely to go through. Not every poem I like, especially like the beginning stuff doesn't actually work for as me as well, but the parts in which she's talking about grief about her late partner is Invisible Man is a poem about her late partner and he had dementia and stuff. And she talks about comics and she talks about how when there's invisible man they have trouble painting them so what they do is they put all these sketched lines around him so you can see the outline of him but he's not there and she talked about losing him to dementia and how he's not there anymore but also after he's gone and then if she's sitting across a table from a man with sketched lines and he's still there and every part of him is still there but he's not there and there's also mr lionheart and there's dearly and these all these poems that are so foundational to the ways in which I wanted to write poems. Not about the same subjects, but just looking at it being like, I want to capture emotion, to take Lionheart, to take, you know, the idea of these comics and to transform it into a metaphor that works for something else in my life. And I really, really love her poems. So yeah, definitely not exactly like her either, but I was like, okay, Margaret Atwood, but I can't use her as a comp because when they think of Margaret Atwood, they're going to think of The Handmaid's Tale. And that's not what my writing is like. And then I reread The Tradition and 
oh my goodness it was like a moment because that book is phenomenal it was one of my favorite like books that I've ever read and like rereading it it just cemented that it is Jericho Brown won the Pulitzer Prize so it's not surprising that he's a fantastic author but the way that he illustrates forms the way that he rebrings images and just like one moment like bullet holes I think is like one of the best poems I've ever read I read it to my roommate and she just sat there stunned for like 20 minutes and then was like yeah you can't compare yourself to him he's too good and I was like I know but he's so cool and I take so much inspiration from the way that he writes and he's so cool but I also can't compare myself to him because he's freaking amazing one day maybe I might be on the like somewhat bleeding edge of him so my my comp search has not gone particularly well but it did bring me back in touch with some of my favorite poets and then I've also been reading post-colonial love poem by Natalie Diaz and this one is good it is not quite the style that I like like I find the more long form poems is often things that I don't work with as well like I tend to write shorter poems and I write longer poems but my long poems tend to be shorter than a lot of people's medium length poems so she has some really good poems and I really like her phrases some poems really really work and like some lines stick in your head and stay but the whole poems often don't work for me and I think it's more a stylistic thing than a theme thing because I love the themes the same with Ocean Vaughn I've been reading Time as a Mother I had the same issue with Night Sky with Exit Wounds where I was like I love the poems some of them like really really touch me but the style Listic choices in his things are not where I am and I think that's where like form like you can be like this is awesome I'll still read you you're still a poet that I admire and that I can like get a lot from but the the style and the way that they choose to write poetry is not quite the way that I enjoy taking poetry or how I write poetry so I do feel a little foolish just even talking them because Ocean Vaughn is Ocean Vaughn and like Natalie Diaz won a Pulitzer Prize for this collection so like I can't really be like ah poetry not good like their poetry is great it's just not the way that I most enjoy poetry so yeah <laughs> so after so it was so funny because I was sitting there like reading these poems and loving them loving them so much and then I like found an opportunity that I don't know really if I can talk about it very much but like I just found one where I was like okay this is really cool it's related to poetry and I'm going to apply and stuff and it was the same week and I just spent like reading I just spent like a week reading poetry collections and I was immersed in this fully and then this opportunity came up and I was like yes this is so cool so it has been like a really eager week where I've been like super excited for a lot of things but also like nerve-wracked so that was really good I also read You Make a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Meze and such a beautiful book I know it's like controversial and I probably don't have space in the video to talk about why all the things is controversial but I thought the ways that it talks about grief and remaking yourself and like dealing with your traumas was so beautiful I understand why some people give it like a one star just because of the content which makes sense but also I got over the content and it was really good <laughs> in terms of media I've just been watching and rewatching watching Jane and Georgia such a fantastic show really love it Lo really love the dynamics it's a show with a lot of flawed characters but I really really love them and I really just enjoy them I think in season two that they mature a lot but are also incredibly problematic still but they're supposed to be problematic and I just really love like characters where they feel realistic and they're just going through crap I love it and I really recommend the show if you like messy teenage mom relationships and talking about things and friendships and I don't know I really love it it's a strange thing that these things coexist so often in my mind but like poetry and comics often go really well together and I'm not sure exactly why they both don't take as long to read but they also have a lot of nuance in them and I really love them so I started catching up on Wayne Family Adventures this is a webtoon that is based on DC Comics and it's really really good it's slice of life it's the Bat Family like the Bat Family like I like like they have jokes and humors and they have like really dark moments but it's like not all the gritty we don't like people because like Batman literally has the largest cast of supporting characters in all of comics and in almost all of fiction and he's often seen as a loner in like live action movies and it drives me insane so I really love this it has some moments of like really really deep like I love I love canon because I love that there's so much like there's 80 years of history here and like like years and years of things so in episode 65 there's this beautiful scene between Tim and Damien I kind of want to do a review and like dive into it because it and 66 are like why I love it because one is like super serious and one is like super beautiful and I really like both of them but like 65 goes into Tim and Damien and they were Robins at different ages and they have these kind of interesting relationship because of the fact that 
they kind of overlapped in when they were Robin and they're both insecure about different things. I, I think Tim and Damien might be the most opposite out of the Robins. Like the Robins are all very unique but these characters are quite different so like I think that they work really well and their insecurities are opposite but they also complement each other and it's a really really lovely scene. And then we have 66 which is just hilarious. It's the two like darkest Bat family things with Jason and Cass just being like more the grumpy darkness and the they have the thing where they have like this new kid Duke who's like you know he's been on the team for a while but he's like more like straightforward and stuff and he's like hey we've been hearing that you've been entering through doors and he's like yeah that, that's kind of what you do and they're like no these are all the funny ways you can enter and they're like exploding walls and going through glass even though it hurts because they're like you know you need to do dramatic things and he's like yeah but isn't it most unexpected to like hit a crook by walking through the front door and they're like Hmm, okay. In one point it's having this really serious conversation of like canon and the ways in which people have been depicted but it's also having like a really funny like kind of jokes on the ways in which superhero things it's like yeah they always break a wall or explode a thing or they come through the roof or they come through the floor and it's like they could just you know walk through the door sometimes. So I really appreciate that and it's just a really good job and then from that I read some of Red Hood. It's a different canon but it's like you know similar thing but it's not the same Jason that we see in Wayne Family Adventures but he is in there and it's him being edgy heroes and stuff and it's quite good. It's one of those things that every single issue I want to come back, come back, come back. It probably isn't like as geared toward me as like Wayne Family Adventures but it's just really really good and really fun and I'm really excited to dive more into the webtoon comic where you know it's free comics and we love them. So that is my thing. I'm going to continue reading both of them and loving them and then I'll probably do some more comics because I really love comics. So I'm in my car now and I realize I forgot a really important aspect of why I wanted to talk about this because I started Ducks by Katie Beaton and my goodness I was like there was something I was reading that was a comic before I was reading DC Comics and it was this and it was so good. I'm like 80% through probably 70% through something like that and I am relating it to so much. It's about the oil sands and about like people going there to pay off their student debts and that's something that I experienced a lot. It was like she's setting this in 2005 and like she's like out of college and stuff like that and most of the people I know like we're kind of that age like I'm a little bit younger than that so like I remember this happening a lot when I was a kid and when I was a teenager and people just disappearing to Alberta to like work on the oil sands and like kind of everything crashed later on and it's not as economical as it used to be but like it is something that's so experienced and then she's also talking about like working in a primarily male thing and having like all of this like sexual abuse and like harassment and stuff like that and men feeling very like entitled to your body and just being in a place where like you know it, there's so many panels that like I feel so seen through because she's like trying to be like everyone's like well you're getting attention that's good and she's like I don't want this attention and stuff and it illustrates that like I worked in kitchens and stuff and I've experienced this or just different areas of my life where I've been like mostly a woman or like just in general life where people will like sexually harass you and then people will act as if it's a compliment it's like it's not a compliment or honestly it will happen online too like I will have people comment on my videos or and just say like really gross things and I'm just like ugh it's such a hard thing to illustrate because it's like as a human as a person who like loves relationships and stuff like that of course I like the fact that like someone likes me but I want it to be me not that I'm the only woman or they think I'm pretty or like all of those things like I want someone who wants intimacy not someone who thinks I'm hot and I think that that happens and in a lot of places it's like it has nothing to do with you it has it has to do with your available body and they want to hit on you because you're there and it's like yeah no that's not the kind of attention that I ever want so I think that she illustrates that really really well and how gross it can feel to just have the constant attention on your body and who you are when you're like okay like yeah I it's not that I don't want a relationship or I don't want a guy it's just I don't want it like this and yeah it is I have never felt more seen in something like this and it does it so well and then what else am I planning on reading this week I I think I'm gonna read Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. I finished Interpreter Maladies and really really loved it. This is her first novel after that and I've been talking to Monica from Dr. Musings about it. It's a book that she really really loved and I'm really excited to read it and discuss it with her and just like love it. I don't know much other than like I know Jhumpa Lahiri's name was like kind of forcibly changed by her school so that it would be more approachable and I think the character deals with it as well and like the integration of being both an American and Indian and like where do you sit in there and stuff and I'm really excited to read it. I think it's also intergenerational like I'm so psyched. I'm also gonna be finishing some of the poetry sections that I'm in and I think I want to read Ariel by Sylvia Platt because it's a poetry collection I started a few years ago and just never finished 
And then I also have small things like these. This is a book that I read last January and really, really liked. It's set in Christmas time, it's set in snow, and I liked it. I want to include it in my favorites. I wanted to read Foster by her as well, and then I was like, oh, well, I feel like small things like this has slipped a little bit, and I want to talk about it in my favorites as well. So I'm going to reread it and read Foster. Both of them are incredibly short, so that should be good. And yeah, that's my plans. I'll probably read other things and I'll probably divert because I'm really good at like being like, cool thing, gonna go over there for a while. So please tell me what you've been reading, what you've been enjoying, and yeah, I will talk to you next time. Bye!